If you're trying to lose that extra 10, 20, 30, or more pounds, what provides a stronger motivation? Being surrounded by visions of toned model bodies as a reminder of your finish line? Or does a room full of like-bodied strivers help you lose that self-consciousness and focus on the goal? Well, tonight we visit a new kind of gym where all the members have the latter in common. And paying a visit is a man who knows what it takes to tackle serious obesity. ABC's own Alex Perez. In a culture that values thin, the debate is on fire. There we go, big smile. From plus-size models posing for the cameras to curvaceous superstars like Adele. Together oh. Belting it out and winning an Oscar for Skyfall. And there's Lena Dunham proudly bearing it all in her hit show, Girls. Plus size is going mainstream with clothing stores that market cute clothes to big girls. I think in today's world when there's so many positive, you know, role models out there, Octavia Spencer, Adele, Melissa McCarthy from Bridesmaids that I think are changing the way things are viewed. Vogue magazine, notorious for featuring paper-thin figures, will soon feature Kate Upton on the cover, a swimsuit model famous for her curves. So is there still real shame in being overweight? For Chris, Sharon, Lewis, and David, the answer is yes. They are all here at Downsize Fitness. 15 seconds. A Chicago gym where membership is reserved for the overweight only. There's a need for a place that heavy people need to go and concentrate on losing weight. They are all self-described outcasts from the mainstream gym scene. There's not a, a culture of acceptance in America for overweight people. You can still uh, discriminate based on size. Downsize Fitness is now part of the national argument. Are overweight people still treated differently? Just this week, the CVS pharmacy chain told workers they had to submit information on their weight, body fat, and glucose levels, or pay a surcharge, an extra $600 a year for their company's health insurance. Another hot-button issue, overweight airline passengers. Should they have to buy an extra seat? Blogger Kenley Tigerman says she was humiliated by a Southwest Airlines gate agent in 2011. The gate agent came up to me and he began, he asked me how much I weighed. He said that I was too fat to fly, that I would need an additional seat. Sharon has also felt the pain of harsh stares and ridicule. She joined Downsize Fitness last year, starting weight 376 and still reeling from the sting of a bad experience with a personal trainer at a mainstream gym. I don't know if she was afraid of, you know, training a fat person or what it was. So all I was able to do was sit in the corner and work on the treadmill. It made me feel like a pariah, like I didn't belong there, but yet I was allowed to join. In six months at Downsize Fitness, Sharon dropped 20 pounds. The workouts are stressful, they're tiring. We ask people to come five times a week. We call people if they uh, don't show up. They only allow membership to those at least 50 pounds overweight. You know, there's some who will argue that you're segregating the obese people. Why do they need to have their own gym? How do you respond to that? Gyms are built for fit people to stay fit. I don't think they're built for fat people to get fit. So in a way we're segregating, but we're segregating for a reason. Her goal weight, 225. <laughs> Lewis also joined just six months ago, starting weight, 310 pounds. You got it. He tried to lose weight at one of those other gyms and was a member for 12 years, paying $75 a month. But after only one year, he never went back. So for 11 years, you paid for a gym membership and you never went? It wasn't something where I was comfortable going into the gym. Uh, you're on your own. There's no one there to help you. There's no one to explain what you should be doing. So far, Lewis has dropped 50 pounds. His goal weight, 180. <laughs> You're doing fish, and you'll like do a lot of soy. Right. Exercise physiologist Jennifer Ventrell says the program works. Is this a cop-out in some ways? And where does it end? Do you start having grocery stores for big people? Do you start having bigger planes specifically for bigger people? This is about making someone feel comfortable to make the change, to engage in a healthy behavior. It's not, oh, it's OK that you're big. You can stay the way that you are. There you go. Chris is their biggest success story yet. His first day, he weighed nearly 550 pounds. 
A year later, he's lost a whopping 202 pounds and hopes to get down to 190. Like I said, the fear got the best of me. Chris took me back to his neighborhood and we retraced the half block long walk that eventually brought him to downsize. I was like this. I was just trying to hold myself up and my back was just hurting too much. Now he's one of the most active members at the gym. Full disclosure, this is a battle I'm all too familiar with. When I was a teenager, I weighed 356 pounds, a size 54 waist. It took me years of dieting and exercising alone before I was able to bring down my weight and live healthier. You now having others who understand the frustration of being obese would have helped. So there's definite success here. People are losing a lot of weight here and it's a great place to do it. For Nightline, I'm Alex Perez in Chicago.